Well, thank you everybody for joining today. Thank you very much for joining. Um, we certainly have a pretty big topic on our hands. Uh, quite a big, quite a big topic. Um, has anyone heard about the recent, the very recent Facebook uh, file leakage or Facebook data leakage? The very recent one. Like October, I believe it happened. Feel free to put it in the chat. I would take that as a no. Oh, yes, yes, certainly have. So uh, the, the topic we're covering today is obviously pretty big, right? And, um, and when you look at some of the things that are happening in the macro, right? Like, for example, Facebook being the biggest, um, the biggest social media platform out there, um, we indeed we we indeed have seen the the latest and it's not the first one of course but uh, the latest data leakage as well so we know that for many organizations that can typically be quite quite a big issue um quite a big issue because that would essentially be your data your users data so on one hand we have that happening in the macro on the other hand we also have this uh this thing that happened over the past couple of years uh, called covid right so sort of kicked everybody into high gear so uh, we can probably agree that we were all going to move digital, but COVID probably just sped up the, the process a little bit. So all, all these big things happening in the macro um, essentially make the topic that we're covering today that much more interesting and that much more relevant. So it's a, it's a topic that's pretty dear to me, pretty dear to us, and I'm very much happy to, um, to cover that today, right? So you, to kick off a little bit with the introductions, I'm going to introduce ourselves um, and all of the panelists involved as well. So you probably know Open Social. Um, we provide community platforms to mission-driven organizations. So we help different types of communities, engage their communities, build their communities, um, and uh, et cetera. And within Open Social, I work in community engagement and business development and will be your moderator today. Um, you might have seen me in one of the ads uh, leading up to this, uh, to this webinar. Um, but with regards to our panelists, I don't think we, we uh, could have picked a, a stronger panel group uh, in, in many ways. So I'll start off with uh, Marjorie Anderson, uh, who's uh, out in Washington, D.C. at the moment. So she is an online community specialist. Um, she particularly in the nonprofit space. So she's the product manager of digital communities for the Project Management Institute. And moreover, she's also the founder of Community by Association. So she works every single day with different types of community managers, membership managers, community builders of organizations of different sizes and, and different, uh, different domains. So this is also a topic that's pretty, uh, pretty uh, dear to her. I believe she has already posted content uh, so much regarding this topic, and she's certainly a thought leader in, in, the, in the matter. So couldn't be happier to have her on. Um, next up, we have Kai Troll, who I believe is joining us from Brussels, but you never really know with Kai. I mean, he could, could very well be in a, in a different place. But Kai is also, um, are you joining us from Brussels, Kai? I am at the moment in Brussels, yes. That's yes. Right. <laughs> well, uh, Kai, first and foremost, I'd like to introduce him as the president of Association World, which is the place where associations innovate. Um, I've seen uh, firsthand the events that they that they create, and I've and I've also seen the content that they post out. Uh, Kai, in particular, he's very much a visionary. He really understands community building, uh, what uh, where community building is headed, and he's very bold in taking actions towards that. So he's very much a specialist in communities, uh, in associations, uh, those types of communities. Um, so super happy to have him on as well. But uh, alongside with president of Association World, he does so many things. He's also the chairman and director of Best Buddies International, and he's the head of development of International Sports and Culture Association. Um, he's also constantly in different conferences and, and conventions. He's a speaker, he's a moderator. Uh, I don't know how he does everything that he does, but super glad to have Kai on. Then we have Matthijs Flaming. Matthijs is a strategy consultant here at Open Social. We call him the online uh, community evangelist. A community evangelist. He has a very vast experience um, over the last 20 years. He's worked in the association's meetings industry. 
Um, he's been the director of marketing at the International Congress and Convention Association. So because of his experience, he's also uh, very much uh, really understands community building, very much understands um, what channels to utilize, where we're currently at and where we're headed. And he's a big advocate uh, for new online uh, community building methods, let's say. And I'm sure you're going to hear a lot more about that um, today. And finally, we have Moritz Arendt, who is the head of product here at Open Social. Um, Moritz is essentially the man behind the product, uh, the man behind the platform. So he's very much, he has a great understanding of human behavior, human psychology, online psychology, offline psychology. And he also really can bring that into technical terms and into very tangible features, et cetera. So having Moritz on would bring a pretty, uh, very much a fresh perspective here as well. And I'm sure that he's going to cover uh, a lot of these more tangible areas over how you could think about community platforms or about building your own platform um, on, a more, on a more tangible level. So <clears throat> everybody ready? Guys, I'm very, uh, very glad to have you all on. We can start off with this. Uh, we prepared this online poll for everyone, just so we also understand where everybody is at. So the question is, where are you currently building your online community? Yeah. And um, you should have a link, uh, or you should have a window rather pop up and you can just um, click one of the answers. So we get a general, general idea here. And I believe Adrian, we can see the results um, right away. So you could be building it on social media. You could already be building it on your own platform. Oh yes, good point, Moritz. Um, we are also recording this. Uh, we are also recording this meeting. I started recording it already. Um, so I believe we can also send this out afterwards, just in case you'd like to share this with somebody else as well. Or if anybody has personal concerns about being involved in a recorded doc document on the internet. Yes, very much so. So without further ado, okay, we can have a look at the polls here. So. 42% already using their own community platform. 17% um, are on social media, 8% on other, and 33% currently not building um, an online community. Perfect. So thank you very much. This is a very, uh, this is a very insightful start. So uh, we should indeed tackle this, tackle this topic from all sides. So the very first side to, uh, to, to start here with is probably the, the social media side. So I have a question for Marjorie and Kai to, to kick this off. So as a community builder, as a membership manager or a communications expert, what is social media good at? We can first tackle that. What is social media good at and what is the value it provides to you and, and your organization, essentially? This is a great question. Um, I, think, I, I think social media is really good at reach. I think it allows you to reach a wide range of people where they may already be talking and consuming content, um, looking for information. So if you're trying to drive awareness, if you're trying to acquire new members or customers, um, or if you're trying to cast a wide net with um, content, social media is a really great way to really broadcast the word out about things that you're doing, drive awareness, make people aware of who you are, what you do, um, and, and then kind of drive that business back. So I think in that respect, it's a great way to, to kind of get people's eyes on who you are and help them kind of discover the value that you can provide to them as a company or as an organization. So I think it really does a great job at that. And that fits nicely into a lot of strategies for organizations and companies who are looking to acquire new members, new um, um new um, business, new customers, or even just kind of start getting the word out about their own thought leadership and those types of things. So more so as a mechanism for reach uh, and, and awareness building, essentially, it's really good at that. Yes, I think it's wonderful at that. <laughs> yeah. Kai? Yeah, I would say, first of all, I don't think that a lot of organizations are really good with the social media in general. 
Um, and uh, I, I think we see that um, in our work on a daily basis, um, whether that is um, with Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever it is. Um, I think one of the key questions is, um, and that refers a bit to uh, what Marjorie was saying, who do we try to reach with what sort of message? And I guess we would, I guess Twitter um, uh, would be the most open uh, platform in a way you reach just everybody. It's not necessarily too focused. And um, I know according to latest uh, data that the the use of Twitter here in Europe, at least among associations at least, is <clears throat> decreasing a little bit because they find themselves in a huge forest of information and um, you know doesn't necessarily do a whole lot to them. I mean, we referred in a way to the open social platform because, um, and that is the case with Association World and others, because we need to figure out what to push out, when to whom, um, and also maybe to understand a bit more how we can use the platform uh, related to, let's say, the Association World events and uh, Brussels International Association Forum that we are launching in December and the recently developed uh, and launched Geneva International Association Forum. So the key question is what happens in between? And when we build a community, um, we, we talk about, first of all, you know, members versus community. So I think there first still has to be a mind shift from moving people's mind and actions on uh, maybe away from membership towards a community and what that actually means and how we use generally social media, not as a, let's say, one off campaign once a week or three times a month, but how do we create um, strategies all year round strategies using all sorts of media and and to me then we need a very centralized platform that helps us to push out different messages to different type of platforms um, but in a more centralized planned way uh, indeed indeed and uh, also to clarify one thing for uh, all the attendees here um, some of the panelists have a broader experience in the association space, so at times the conversation might lead more towards in that direction. Um, but to be clear, everything we're discussing here today is primarily a communications, uh, a communications debate or a communications uh, discussion. So it does apply to different types of communities, uh, all types of organizations as well. Um, so indeed, it's, it's about the, the shift of thinking in terms of communities um, instead of instead of just members, and perhaps uh, Morris can uh, can tell us a little bit now, like how do you see what a community platform is, and in particular, how would you define it as different from social media? Uh, you're muted, Moritz. So um, probably the most read sentence in the last year of Corona. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, for us, it's uh, in, with open social. What we always say, we try to create digital spaces um, where people can connect and communicate. So I feel a community is really in a like we we we're taking this now in the online context and communities versus uh, versus uh, like self-owned communities versus uh, social media um, uh, communities or social media platforms but uh, communities also that exist something that exists in reality I and mean, I already mentioned associations who meet on a on congresses and so forth and um, what the difference there is also towards towards social media is that you try to um, find a digital space for a community that exists in reality right or that has a common purpose for people that uh, are in the same association that have the same goal to change the world in terms of climate change, in terms of like uh, their their neighborhood, uh, improve uh, street uh, a street they live in or whatever. Right? It can be very small, it can be very big, or it can be professional. But all of those people have a common purpose on to work towards something, and uh, that that is basically what a community is about. Right? To come together as different people that have a certain goal that they share and um, work towards that goal and um, i think i think also if you look into really what what makes a community um, specific 
uh, or community platform specific, what distinct, distinguishes it from, from social media platforms is this common goal and this willingness to work together, but also a certain private. Um, I think it was already mentioned that like social media is great in outreach, right? And it, it truly is. So it is also not, those two are not per se mutually exclusive, but while you have uh, uh, like, like external and public representation on the one with a community, you try to more really create a, a space where people can work on those things, where you, where you can get gather those people that you reached with the social media accounts or with like your social media messaging, uh, you gather those people on the co com digital community, on a community platform, and the other people can actually work on the, 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 the issues you, you're uh, sharing with each other and can make progress, can connect with each other, can grow towards that goal of becoming a community. So you're basically saying that one of the biggest differences or one of the main um, uh, differences there is sort of the goal of the platform or the goal of the inhabitants of the platform? I think for me, that's very important. Yeah. And I think for me, the, the one is more external representation where the other one is more a uh, co connection, like a place to connect. That's, that, that's, that's I think, for me, the, the, the biggest differentiator between the two. Okay. Um, and we're going to move to to Marjorie as well. So we're just going to try to uh, gather everybody's thoughts into sort of what the main differences are. Um, Marjorie, you also wrote uh, actually an article about this back in June called Online Community Platforms versus Social Media, uh, The Great Debate. Everyone can also see why Marjorie makes so much sense uh, to be in this, uh, in this panel discussion. Um, and Marjorie, you definitely quite went quite a bit in depth into that article, into what the differences are. Um, but could you summarize that here for us? What, what are those differences, um, those main differences between platforms, uh, own platforms and social media? Yeah, absolutely. So I think with social media, um, as I as I as I stated, it's it's great for reach, and I think that it does its part in connecting people, but it only is gonna take you so far, right? It doesn't do a great job of building trust and relationships between the people who are building those communities and the people they're building them with, right? So there's only so much that you can control the data. There's only so much you can control the experience. And at the end of the day, social media is one of those things where it's kind of like, okay, well, I'm gonna be on Facebook anyway, right? So I'm gonna join a group, right? Like, and it's, it's, I don't want to say it's easy because even if you're trying to build community within a social media platform with all of those things, all the limitations that you have, it's still hard work. But when you're looking at what an, on, an owned online community platform can do, you can really create the experience that your community members are looking to have. And you're building this experience with them. They have stake in what happens within this space. They care enough to come and bring their expertise, to provide you feedback, to allow you to um, get additional information from them, to dictate how their data is shared. They have a vested interest in what happens in this space. So the amount of time and effort that they put into an online community is going to be much different than the amount of time and effort they put into participating in a Facebook group, right? They're only going to put in as much as they're going to get out of it. So I think when we're thinking about social media platforms and community platforms, um, the goal of community platforms is to bring people together and help you build something with them versus post a space so they can ask questions. It's about it's about so much more than just forums. It is about building trusting relationships and connection that's meaningful to people where that doesn't always happen in a social media space. So it's essentially a lot more about including them in the process of, of uh, going after your mission or after your goal uh, as a community. And not and including them in the process and ensuring that it makes sense for them as well, right? Because you can build a community um, and the difference between social media and, and community platforms is that when you're building that community, those folks, you're bringing people along with you, 
right? So they can tell you, this is the experience that I need to have in order for this to be rewarding. This is the type of content that I need to see in order for this to be helpful to me. These are the types of people I want to connect with. And you can um, create that experience through an online community platform, whereas it's very limited in a social media platform. You're at the mercy of whoever that owns that tech, and there's only so far you can take it. And at some point, um, people are going to want something a little bit more meaningful. You can have a meaningful and rewarding community with 25 people in it. How meaningful and rewarding is it if you've got 10,000 people in it? Not saying that that's not possible. There are large communities out there that drive, you know, tons of, of value for people. But at the end of the day, you know, what's really going to help you further the purpose of that community um, as you're building it and the people who are going to be participating in it, what's going to be important for them. So um, I, I think that the differentiator there is also the fact that, you know, if I'm participating in that online community and it's on an owned platform, I've got some stake in that. There's something that I can do to affect the experience and make it better for the people who are participating there with social media, not so much. So it also comes down to, of course, the experience of the community member himself or herself is how do they feel in the process? How do they feel about their, uh, their involvement in the impact um, and, and in the entire process? Um, Absolutely. And moving on to Matthijs, uh, because Matthijs, you also wrote an article specifically on this topic, um, social media versus own platforms, where should you be building your online community? So I think Marjorie uh, touched a lot of points here, um, but you also included a table, uh, which I believe we could show right now, uh, a table highlighting some of the differences uh, between social media and, and, um, and online communities or online community platforms. If perhaps we could show that, um, we could show that table and have you walk us through that. Yeah. Sure. So, indeed, so in short, indeed, owning the data and owning the experience uh, makes makes uh, makes you much more effective in building uh, uh, yeah in building uh, uh, value adding collaboration uh, on your own platform. So actually contributing uh, uh, together as a community and as members uh, towards a common goal and effectively collaborate on that. And uh, and an owned community platform is designed for that. It's designed for effective collaboration and effective community building. Uh, while actually social media is designed for harvesting your data and mining your data and selling you ads, which is, of course, a very different starting point, uh, uh, roughly put, of course. Um, and uh, indeed, I've used this table to, to list some, some key differences uh, between social media and owned member engagement uh, uh, platforms, uh, just to sum up some of those differences. So indeed, we talked about new audience reach. Uh, of course, the, 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 the main assumption uh, between uh, for, for um, people looking to build an online community or organizations to build an online community, they think, well, social media will be very effective because my members are already there or my my audience is already there, so we should build, the, build it on, on social media. This is the reach we talked about, right? However, if you use an own platform, then you use the own platform to build the, the, uh, the, the effective collaboration and the effective connections. Uh, but you should still use social media to, to, to build that new audience reach and to, to, to attract uh, uh, that audience to your own community platform. So that's not really an uh, that's not really an argument. Um, for your existing member reads, of course, your existing members uh, should be signed up to your platform, so you have 100% reach. Well, uh, with the algorithms on social media, uh, your organic reach is only two to five percent uh, uh, on Facebook, for example. So actually, your reach is is worse than uh, than on an own platform. Uh, so you have no control over the experience that we talked about. While in your own platform, you have full control. So if if community building is your core business, eh, is the main thing in which you are providing added value to your members, uh, and you don't own uh, the the system or the platform that provides that added value, um, yeah, yeah, you could you could have an issue. Uh, so you have no control of the experience on, on Facebook. If they change something, then uh, yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> uh, you have no control over that. Um, distractions, of course, are very high. Uh, if you're on social media, the main reason people are there is maybe maybe cat videos or pictures of food. That uh, uh, that is, of course, distracting from the the effective collaboration or the the the, the value adding collaboration. Uh, there's limited um, uh, options for branding. While on own platform, you can fully brand it to your to your own brand. 
uh, interactive features are limited while on your own platform it's basically unlimited if you want a specific feature tailored to your specific needs you could add that to your own uh, to your own platform uh, data privacy of course very big issue um, uh, is quite low on social media platforms but higher on an owned uh, platform you can own the data uh, which also might mean that your members are more willing to share data with you. And this is not a small thing. The, the, the owning of data means that you can personalize actually your communication to your members uh, by based on their, 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 uh, their action on your own community platform. So you can see, you can track what have they interacted with, what are, are their interests, uh, um, uh, and you can target them with, uh, with relevant information based on that. Uh, integration, of course, is a big thing, which you cannot do or, or limitedly, limitedly do with social media platforms, with your CRM system, with your finance system, uh, maybe with your event platform. Uh, and monetization is a big one. I mean, this is the business model of social media. When you engage your members uh, on social media, uh, they are being monetized by those social media platforms. Uh, if you engage them on your own platform, uh, you can actually uh, you you can facilitate new uh, new models of, uh, of 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 driving revenue from your from your community, or or you can update your business model based on that, with uh, um, with uh, paid access to pay, to to uh, premium content, for example, or subscription models, or uh, selling event ticketing, and so on. So um, yeah, that's why I created this table to more thoroughly or more in detail list uh, some of the key differences. I think because you certainly have a have a list there of the different areas of um, what makes social media different. And I think how this ties back into what Marjorie was saying just now is you're essentially able to control the experience for your community member uh, more so because it would be your own platform, because you could create your own features, your own user flows, um, your own your own ways of connecting and facilitating connection. That's essentially giving you as a um, as an organization and your community a little bit more more control, and uh, I'd like to give uh, Kai a, a little bit um, uh, his his word here as well. Um, and we could also phrase the question as based on everything uh, we just talked about and your own your own personal experience. So why do many communities choose to build their community on their own platform? Uh, in, instead of social media so we're once again just setting the stage with all the key differences over here um what are yeah, your I thoughts think, I, I think there's a certain realization um, by organizations um corporate or non-profit that social media isn't um, a communication strategy they are tools and we need to get to the point where we think they are all i mean a lot of organizations or non-profits have you know, a World Heart Day, a World Disability Day, whatever, the, the UN days are all there. They are all creating campaigning and they are all using a lot of social media to reach out, get their messages out, understand, um, create more awareness. But they're all quite isolated. So the question is, how do we get to, you know, to change people's minds that this is all part of an all year round communication strategy? And it's not one or the other, but I think um, one key question is when we use social media, we consume or we put information on there for people to consume that information. When we have our own platform, we create. And I think that is a key element. It's what uh, Moritz and Marjorie mentioned. It's bringing people together on that platform. And even if you would have 10,000 people, Marjorie, on that platform, you know, hopefully they would still find an effective way to communicate and engage in subgroups or by themes or topics or interests, whatever it is. But um, to me, an own platform does so much more than social media, because when we then talk about um, all year round strategic communication, I think one fundamental element is that we can use our own platforms to help actually communicate. And one area is social media, but the other area is also to help communicate better and more effectively with our members or with our partners, because we can all do that through this one same platform. And when we talk about, um, let's say platforms, you know, a lot of platforms do a lot of things uh, like uh, Mata has just explained. The key question to us was, 
you know, when we have our own platform, what problem does it help solve? This is the key question. And to us, it helps solve a variety of communication elements that we are about to embark and approach. So I think that is one of the fundamental differences for us, the way we see it, and how we also then talk to different organizations on how to, let's say, or the idea to promote the idea of uh, having an own platform. But it's not one or the other, but fundamental is what other problems besides getting messages out there does that platform help solve for you and for your staff and for the organization and what you do? Super interesting because you also uh, dove into some of the uh, so, sort of some of the specific features or um, uh, went into a little bit of feature talk into how a community could be different because you could have certain groups in there or whatnot, um, which does also lead to uh, to my next question that I have for Moritz, which is, um, could you describe or could you share some specific features just to give a very tangible yeah. Um, tangible explanation here of, of what could be different. No, I think I, th I think there are two aspects in which you could basically roughly categorize it. And I think one of them is very important, which is like the tools you give people to work together, right? We talked about that um, while social media has a great outreach, uh, you actually uh, uh, mentioned that like at one point it's not enough for people, right? So you need to give them tools to, to, to continue on the interest they've shown and actually create output. So we talk about discussion features, about I don't know uh, ideation features where you can uh, where you can gather new ideas, discuss them, uh, create a, create I don't know uh, the um, uh, some some uh, some contest about uh, how to improve uh, improve uh, when we get back to this uh, example of like community building in a city, how to improve the, the neighborhood or the, the, the park or whatever, right? So you can really open it up to contribution and create this sense for people, what we talked about, the sense about you you can take them into the process. So interactive features are really important, real-time communication, real-time um, collaboration on documents, uh, things like that. So the, the, the tool set that allow people to really do the things they can't properly do on social media and then on the other side you need the, the the tools that build the trust we talked also about this that this is really important to create a certain um, sense of data ownership so um, make sure that people are that that your platform is transparent that your communication methods are transparent so we you need for good community building online you need uh, always a sort of recognizability of the people there but you also need like a clear recognizability who are the owners of certain communities, who are the owners of groups, who are the owners of events, how can I reach them, what happens to my data. So uh, GDPR tools are important, um, tools that explain data consent, tools that uh, guide people through the platform and so forth. So th those are the two points that are really important for, for, for community building is A, give people something to do that they can't do on other places and b allow them to differentiate like okay i know who the people are i'm talking to and i can recognize the people and i have the feeling that this is like somewhat a closed environment where i where i, I have a certain sense of privacy instead of we throw it open and everybody can say something about it right i mean we all know twitter it's like a great place in the best best scenarios it creates awesome human interaction but in the most scenarios, it, it creates a lot of people shouting at each other, and that's like a over sense. It's like a like a sense of everything is public, everything is there, and at any time there's somebody who knows it better than you. And so the trust aspect that Marjorie mentioned, I think, is really important to create and to to give safe spaces also in this way. Like a, only a certain group can, right? You mentioned 25 people can give a very big sense of fulfillment. And sometimes, unfortunately, you have to protect those 25 people against 10,000 other people. And so closed groups, things like that, really um, access per, vis uh, visibility permissions. It's an important tool in community building. So it's, it's uh, in many ways, uh, empowering and giving the members the freedom to interact with each other or collaborate I, as they I, wish. 
I think empowering is a really good word and giving them the agency over their own community and the way they want to communicate with each other. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. A, that's a good summary. Yeah, and then just to add a bit to the, to the trust issue, because indeed, if you're an existing uh, community and you are uh, mobilizing that or activating that on your own platform, then you know those your members uh, know they're going to meet other respected members and going to talk about your specific issue or your specific topic that you, uh, your your association is, is for instance at your trade association your specific niche is what they're going to be talking about there and then know there's going to be trusted and reliable information there and respected people who are an authority on this topic and you're going to have quality interactions there without distractions so it's, it's really majorly changing the way in which you operate if you are a community-led organization like an association. Uh, and it's a crucial in winning the fight for attention that's going on in this uh, attention economy currently going on, where, where, where all your members are overloaded with information. There's fake news and there's lack of trust and there's lack of credibility. Uh, so if you can be the, uh, the trusted provider of a trusted platform with trusted connections and uh, respected uh, connections and content, that's crucial in uh, your core activities. And uh, absolutely, absolutely, Matthias. And with when you look at all these different things that you can do on social media, and, and Marjorie, this is a question for you. Um, when you look at all these different things and all these different tools and all these different features, um, what would that mean for you as a community manager? How would that change your life? What, what, would, what would it uh, empower or allow you to do? Um, that you wouldn't currently be able to do, let's say on social media? And so I think one of the big things that comes to mind is it allows you to support, um, I think I, it allows you to support a full user journey within the community because I am, I'm, a, I'm a big believer that people don't, people come to the community for the community, right? But that's not why they stay. They stay because of what they're able to get out of that community, whether that's knowledge and information, other connections, jobs, opportunities, whatever that looks like. And so when you've got all of these really great tools that help um, integrate across different systems, that protect data, that allow people to segment off and talk about um, topics that are important to them as part of the whole community experience, you're supporting their full journey. And so then as a community builder, what you're able to do is show the value of that community interaction within your organization. You can show um, your senior leaders if you need to get buy-in to get additional resources, what you're able to enable through community because of the fact that you've got control over these features, that because of the fact that you're able to garner some trust and build relationships with your community members, because of the fact that you've enabled them to create content, to connect with one another, to create experiences that are meaningful for them that keep them coming back. And then, oh, there's a thought leadership piece that your organization offers. Let me connect to that. And I found that because of the community. There's all of these different, different convergence points that allow community builders to really show the value of this community to, to the rest of the organization. And then that community becomes an intangible resource or a very tangible resource to the rest of the organization um, in terms of how it operates. So it goes from an online community that, okay, well, let's go ahead and invest in it and see what it does to something that is integral to business operations. And so um, not only that, but then it allows you to provide additional data about the behaviors of these people that better informs product decisions, that better informs event experiences, that better informs um, the way that you develop a professional development content for for your members holistically. So there's a ton of information that can be um, pulled from these online community experiences that feed the rest of the business operations. And so it really, again, allows community builders to say, here's, here's the value, I'm handing it to you on a silver platter and really kind of um, show what that means for not only the success of the organization, but what it means for the success of the people who are, who are participating in that online community and then what that longevity and what success looks like long-term. Yeah, I think those, those are really great points. And I think also to add to this, um, another, another aspect is that you can even define your own values as a, or if you have your own community, right? We talked about this quickly before, but on like social media, the primary like, goal of that is to 
keep people on the app and keep them staying there because that's the goal that Facebook has. More time on app, it's more 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 uh, ads, is more revenue. That's like the, literally the only North Star metric like that Facebook handles. And you are you have to submit to that. But if you have your own community and build up your own community, um, you can really define what your values are. So, for example, with gamification systems, you can say uh, each interaction that you perform that's beneficial reporting something uh, helping somebody giving a like giving a comment a post contacting somebody or something like this gives you x amount of points and you define how much this is worth right so with the gamification system you not only give like uh, incentive to continue that journey that you talked about but you are defining how that progression goes and what is important for you as a community leader to to see in your community so not only you can that do you can you report a community or the value of your community to the organization but you can even define how precisely this value looks like and what are successful interactions for you on this community yes i could add a few things um Matthijs and Marik, um what if you remember back in april when we set together um, what we thought this community platform should be um, we spend a full day with flip charts, putting things on there. And then uh, in May, we actually um, send out a one question to our community, asking them what they think a, community, a good community platform should do for them. And once we received more than, I think, 800 responses, we bundled them into 30 categories. Um, uh, the, the news was we have to start at scratch because um, the, 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 the community um, told us that they probably use this in a different way to the way we envisioned this. Um, so we thought we know it a little bit, um, but the reality was also that the community wanted more decentralized approach. Um, it's, it's a bit what, um, what we are saying here. I mean, we can put content on there, we can facilitate it, we can control it to a certain extent, but actually the community wants also their own discussions. They want to contribute. I think that is also partly what keeps them there, that they actually own the discussion and own some part of the content and some network. I, I think that is really one learning that came out of it because it's not good enough only to put um, you know, clips on their videos, uh, webinars that we've done, a bit of information here, because they can probably also see that on our YouTube channel. So, I mean, the question was, what makes that platform different and how are the users, what is the user experience? And based on that, we had to rethink a little bit. And of course, we are talking very easily about all this, like this is done in no time. We are actually a bit delayed finalizing this. And one crucial element um, in order to drive this is then also the investment into a community engagement coordinator or person at least who then really helps to do that. But uh, we believe that that investment is really worthwhile because coming back to you know, how that platform will help us um, solve some, uh, some problems is where we then save otherwise in, in, in the case. So, I mean, that, that whole decentralized approach is quite uh, important and for us makes this a very different platform to what we thought it would be from the, or in the very beginning. Um, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I guess once you embark on the journey, you also do realize that um, the journey of setting this up is indeed a lengthier one um, than, than you'd expect initially. Uh, but looking a little bit at the time as well, I mean, this is such a huge topic. We could, we could spend multiple, multiple webinars on this, and we might even do a follow-up, um, might even do a follow-up here. But, okay, um, Matthijs, I have a question for you. So if somebody is interested in getting started with their community platform and uh, migrating their community to their community platform, what are the first steps? Let, let's make this a bit tangible. What are the first steps? How should they think about it? Where do they start? Yeah, I think if, if you're considering a community and a community platform, I think the first question is to ask, what does your long-term strategy look like? And, and, and how big a role does community play in that long-term strategy? Uh, uh, and, and how are you enabling or creating added value by enabling connections between your members of your community? So what are you going to do within the community that, that creates added value? 
And how, how is that solving the needs or the challenges that your, your members are facing? Uh, we still see a lot of, uh, because community is a buzzword right now, but it's often seen as a marketing channel or as a support or marketing channel, while uh, you know uh, the, the, the true communities, like indeed associations or mission-driven uh, organizations, uh, I think, I believe uh, the community platforms are chasing the core way in which, in which they are organizing their community building. Um, and we've all seen, of course, in the, in, the, in the association meetings industry that in the past, for the past 60 years, they used conferences, in-person events as the main or primary way for them to organize their community and build connections and share knowledge. Uh, and this has hardly changed in the last 60 years until COVID. Uh, and the, the, those, uh, those associations and nonprofits are moving towards online events, which basically is old school thinking still, because in online, you don't need to only interact and share knowledge three days a year. You can do that continuously. And there's a lot of talk about hybrid events. I know we've talked about this as well, uh, Kai. And, uh, and indeed, an, an online an, or a hybrid event or the online extension of an in-person event should not be uh, set, set to a, a limited time and space. Uh, you know, you, your online interaction could be year round. Uh, and uh, so I really believe this is a fundamental change uh, uh, for how uh, existing communities are, 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 are operating and are, are building their communities and creating added value for their, uh, for their members. Huge, huge topic. Um, absolutely. We could, we, we could spend so much time here, but I'd like to address a question from uh, Mihai just before we, we wrap up here. Um, uh, Kai, I'm not sure if you can see the, the question, but it says, yes, I saw. could you please expand yes. a bit more what you just meant by a decentralized approach? Yes, Mihai, thank you very much for that, because that's what my people internally also asked me when, when I brought this up. I mean, basically, um, people told us um, how they want to use this. So indeed, uh, what you're saying there um, in the question um, is they wanted to be able to create their own subgroups. They wanted to control actually a discussion in a way, um, also bringing people in that they feel they're aligning with in terms of the theme, topics, uh, industry maybe also. Um, and uh, just the fact that they also, I mean, basically what they didn't want us to do, drive the whole platform. They wanted actually engage and take some ownership and also start the discussions that they feel are valuable. Because, I mean, what we can do is to say, okay, let's start a discussion on good governance. What are, you know, what does good governance mean for one or the other? Um, big topic, fundraising, etc. cetera. Um, but within that um, decentralized approach, they wanted to have their own discussion because if you raise funds, um, and I think we have a person on there from the Wildlife Trust, you know, to raise funds for them or for the med for medical association is very different. And I think that is where people wanted just a bit more um, that decentralized, I mean, empowerment was the, was the word earlier, where people just, you know, were able to let them do what they also want to do within a certain space. We talked about earlier about uh, safety, you know, everything has to be appropriate. All the discussions have to be appropriate. They have to be safe. People need to be able and feel good about how and what they share. If that isn't the case, um, then you have a dilemma. Um, but um, so for, for us, it really, really needed to, it created a rethinking process. And we basically started at zero on how we are setting this up. And um, hopefully we'll be able to finalize that um, very soon before the Brussels International Association Forum, where we actually want to launch that community engagement platform. Yeah, thank you very much, Kai. Um, thank you very much. I think we'll we'll have to wrap the, to wrap this up. I don't think we'll have time to uh, to get a few more questions here. But um, uh, final uh, final thing. Let's just um, uh, Marjorie. Perhaps where can people reach out to you? Can okay, tell them a little bit more about what you do as well? Uh, just to wrap this up, and they could perhaps take this conversation um, afterwards. Absolutely. So if, if anyone's interested in staying in touch, um, you can contact me at marjorie at communitybyassociation.com. That's my email. 
If you're interested in learning what Community by Association does, you can go to communitybyassociation.com. We can help with strategy reviews and development, business justification for community and coaching for community builders as well. So, and we are going to be adding some additional services in 2022, but if you're interested in just reaching out, learning a little bit more, talking about community, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always open to a conversation. Perfect. Um, and Kai, could you could you tell us the, the same for you? You already mentioned a bit about BF as well, but um, please go ahead. Where can people find you? Yes, I mean, I would say, I mean, you you, you see it there, but um, what, what is really important is to say, you know, we haven't figured it all out. We are still in that process that you might be in. So if you have any questions or any also learnings to share, um, then um, let's let's do that. Um, I see one question is, is there a, a platform where we can engage? I guess it's meant in this group on open uh, social platform. That is maybe the next step, but please reach out. Um, we don't have all the answers yet, but we had a lot of learning the last six to eight months. And I'm happy to share that um, in any way. And I'm um, always um, interested to listening to your learnings and how we can also do these things better. Perfect. And, and finally, we can have uh, Matthijs, Matthijs from Open Social. Uh, well, you, 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 you have already found us because you're attending this webinar. Um, what I'm doing at Open Social is also providing a, a consultancy services indeed for organizations that are community led and often mission driven because that's what Open Social is uh, specialized at. Uh, to help them uh, define their strategy. How are you uh, enabling added value by enabling connections uh, with, with, between your members? Uh, and so, yeah, if you uh, are in the process of, uh, of looking into on community platforms, uh, uh, I can help you with that and Open Social can help you with that. We also provide uh, uh, um, comparison guides in which we, uh, which provides checklists uh, uh, and uh, user stories uh, for uh, uh, for setting up a requirement list for compares for comparing different types of uh, community platforms, um, and yeah, we're providing very frequently providing webinars uh, and online content uh, related to this issue. Uh, we're very keen to collaborate indeed with Association World and Kai because we want to collaborate with and have this conversation with uh, mission-driven organizations and community-led organizations on how online community can play a role in uh, in in which uh, in the way in which they operate. Um, yeah, so stay tuned uh, for that and follow us. Follow us on social media. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, our own uh, uh, community talks, our own uh, open social community is not open yet to the public, but will be soon. Yeah, that is true. So we have uh, to the question if there's a database. Uh, so we do have a, our, our own community, which is at the moment for clients only. There is a lot of public content on there, also on manuals and so forth. Uh, you can indeed find a lot of webinars on YouTube. Um, but we do want to open this up for more discussions, for more things to have uh, public engagement on community talks. And um, also what I wanted to mention, it was a joke, like following us on, on social media, but that means I think it's also some, some takeaway from this webinar is like social media isn't bad. It just serves a different purpose and you need to know where to properly use it for, right? I don't want to like get leave people here with the impression we are bashing on social media, maybe on some ethical and social impacts that some social media companies have. But in generally, social media does have its right in any communication strategy. You just need to know where to use it properly. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Well, this has been this has been great. Thank you very much to every single one of the panelists joining. Um, I hope everybody that attended here is leaving with a little bit more information and a little bit more clarity uh, over the matter, over how you could use, or rather how you could think about the matter, what you should be thinking about. Um, and hopefully this helps. We also uh, plugged in a few uh, plugged in a few links over there. We have some of the open social links. If you'd like to either get the comparison guides or look at the consultancy services, um, we have Kai's LinkedIn. I just shared also a community by association as well so you can easily find um you can easily find uh, marjorie and her organization there um let me see if i did that in the correct chat um with that said thank you very much everyone and hope uh, hope um you are leaving this webinar with um a lot to think about <laughs>
<laughs> and the correct information. By association, just finally, I want to make sure I'm, I'm sharing community by association. Perfect. Well, thank um, you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. Enjoy. Have a nice time.